How's it going? Ando here from senseiando.com. If you just signed up for martial arts classes, you might be wondering how to make the most of your practice time. You might also be worried about looking like a total fool. I get it. So today, I've got five tips to help you fit in, earn respect, and build your skills. Here we go. Tip number one, be on time. I can't believe how many students, beginners and even some old timers, who think it's okay to just stroll in late, take 10 minutes to change their clothes, and then expect class to just stop when they make it to the mats so they can catch up with what's going on. Not cool, man. Show some respect and be on time. Even better, show up to your class early. Give yourself time to get a drink of water, say hello, change your clothes, warm up, and get your mind focused on your training. That's not just good for your learning, it shows respect for your teacher and your fellow students. So, get to class early, and if you can't do that, at least be on time. Tip number two, keep it clean and safe. I hate to say it, but every martial arts class has at least one student who stinks. And heads up, if you can't think of who that person is, it might be you. Don't be that guy. Wash your uniform, wear deodorant, and ease up on that ridiculous cologne or perfume you've been wearing. You're going to a kung fu club, not a dance club. And hey, if you had hummus or pesto for lunch, carry some breath mints in your bag. Here's the rule. Show up to every class like you're going out on a first date. Also, if you practice in bare feet, throw some baby wipes into your bag. If you've been walking around all day in flip-flops or open-toed shoes, a quick wipe down of your feet will help keep germs and dirt off the mats and out of my face. Plus, after class, a quick wipe down will help you keep dirt and germs from traveling home with you. And that's a good thing. One more thing. Long nails on your hands and feet, piercings, and jewelry of any kind are all dangerous to you and to everybody else. So trim your nails and lose the bling. If you do happen to get cut or scratched, I also recommend carrying some band-aids and athletic tape in your bag. Getting blood on your uniform might make you feel cool, but getting blood on my uniform? No, not cool. Tip number three, bring a notebook. This tip is so obvious, yet most people don't do it. You had a notebook for every class in your academic school, right? So why wouldn't you have a notebook for your martial arts school? Now, I'm not saying you have to scribble down every word your teacher says during class. Don't do that. But after class, you should definitely have a habit of writing down what you learned. Now, if writing seems like too much of a chore, even though I think that is the best way to do it, well, then use your phone to make a quick voice note or a quick video. I leave the method up to you, but I highly recommend that you take what you're learning and put it into your own words. I promise, a notebook is a game changer. Tip number four. Hold your questions. They say there's no such thing as a dumb question. That, my friend, is a lie. There are dumb questions. Here's an example. Asking a question about a technique that you haven't even practiced yet. I can't tell you how many times I've seen an instructor, a world-class, legendary instructor, interrupted by some hotshot student who wants to sound smart by asking a bunch of what-if questions. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What if he's not wearing clothes? Yeah, but what if he's got a hatchet? Hmm, yes. I hear what you're saying, but what if he doesn't have a head? Hmm? Hey, Karate Kid, zip it. The answers to all of your questions will be revealed by practicing, not by talking. Let's get this straight. A teacher's job is to show you an idea. The student's job is to take that idea and then go practice and explore it. If something's not working, or if something is discovered, then you can ask a question. And that's gonna be a smart question because it's based on experience, not imagination. So, remember this. Listen first, practice second, question third. Tip number five, prepare for the plateau. Being a white belt is the best of times and the worst of times. It's the worst of times because you're often gonna feel like you're drowning in a sea of new information. But it's the best of times because you're never gonna learn so much so fast again. It's thrilling. But at some point, you're gonna hit a wall. 
you're either going to think, I already know all this, or you're going to think, I'm never going to get all of this. Either way, you're wrong. Here's how the learning process works. Your skills make a jump, and then they plateau. Sometimes those jumps are big and dramatic, and everyone can see it. Sometimes the jumps are very, very small, and maybe you're the only one who notices. Sometimes you might have a couple of jumps in the same month. Sometimes that jump might take a year. Sometimes you might think you're actually getting worse, but you're not. It's just how it goes. So don't give up. As long as you're doing the work, you are still learning, even if it doesn't feel like. Remember, no matter how long you've been training, there's always more to learn. So in your head, always be a white belt. That's the secret. Think like a beginner and you'll be a master before you know it. Like 50 years. If you like these tips, hit subscribe. To catch up on everything I'm doing, find the link to sign up for my free email updates list. Until next time, go buy a notebook. Then keep fighting for a happy life.